This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. All right, this is Anarchy by Erico Malatesta, um, 1891. Section 1. The word anarchy comes from the Greek and its literal meaning is without government. The condition of a people who live without a constituted authority or without government. Before such an organization had become to be considered both possible and desirable by a school of thinkers and accepted as the object of a party, which has now become one of the most important factors in the social struggles of our time, the word anarchy was universally used in the sense of disorder and confusion, and it is to this day used in, this, in that sense by the uninformed as well as by political opponents with an interest in distorting the truth. We will not enter into a philological discussion since the question is historical and not theological. The common interpretation of the word recognizes its true and etymological meaning, but it is a derivative of that meaning due to the prejudiced view that government was a necessary organ of social life and that consequently a society without government would be at the very mercy of disorder and fluctuate between unbridled arrogance of some and the blind vengeance of others. The existence of this prejudice and its influence on the public's definition of the word anarchy is easily explained. Man, like all living beings, adapts and accustoms himself to the conditions under which he lives and passes on acquired habits. Thus, having been born and bred in bondage, when the descendants of a long line of slaves started to think, they believed that slavery was an essential condition of life and freedom seemed impossible to them. Similarly, workers who for centuries were obliged and therefore accustomed to depend for work, that is, bread, on the goodwill of the master and to see their lives always at the mercy of the owners of the, la of the land and of capital, ended by believing that it is the master who feeds them and ingenuously ask one how it would be possible to live if there were no masters. In the same way, someone whose legs had been bound from birth but had managed nevertheless to walk as best he could might attribute his ability to move to those very bonds which in fact serve only to weaken and paralyze the muscular energy of his legs. If to the normal effects of habit is then added to the kind of education offered by the master, the priest or the teacher, or etc., who have a vested interest in preaching that the masters and the government are necessary, if one were to add the judge and the policeman who are at pains to reduce to silence those who might think differently and be tempted to propagate their ideas, then it will not be difficult to understand how the prejudiced view of the usefulness of and the necessity for the master and the government took root in the unsophisticated minds of the laboring masses. Just imagine if the doctor were to expound to our fictional man with the bound legs a theory, cleverly illustrated with a thousand invented cases to prove that if his legs were freed, he would be unable to walk and would not live, then that man would ferociously defend his bonds and consider his enemy anyone who tried to remove them. So, since it is thought that government was necessary and that without government there could only be disorder and confusion, it was natural and logical that anarchy, which means absence of government, should sound like absence of order. Nor is the phenomenon without parallel in the history of words. In times and in countries where the people believed in the need for government by one man, monarchy, uh, the word republic, which is governed by many, was in fact used in the sense of disorder and confusion. And this meaning still is still to be found in popular language almost all countries. Change opinion convince the public that the government is not only unnecessary but extremely harmful and then the word anarchy just just because it means absence of government will come to mean for everybody natural order unity of human needs and the interests of all complete freedom within solidarity those who say therefore that anarchists have badly chosen their name because it is wrongfully interpreted by the masses and lends itself to wrong interpretation are mistaken. The error does not come from the word, but from the thing. 
and the difficulties anarchists face in their propaganda do not depend on the name that they have taken, but on the fact that their concept clashes with the public's long-established prejudice on the function of government or the state as it is so-called. Before going on, it would be well to make oneself clear on the word state, which in our opinion is the cause of the real misunderstanding. Anarchists, include, including this writer, have used the word state and still do to mean the sum total of the political, legislative, judiciary, military, and financial institutions through which the management of their own affairs, the control over their personal behavior, the responsibility for their personal safety are taken away from the people and entrusted to others who, by usurpation or by delegation, are vested with the powers to make the laws for everything and everybody and to oblige the people to observe them, if need be, by the use of collective force. In this sense, the word state means government, or to put it any other way, it is the impersonal abstract ex expression of the state of affairs personified by government and therefore the terms abolition of the state, society without the state, etc., describe exactly the concept which anarchists seek to express of the destruction of all political order based on authority and the creation of a society of free and equal members based on a harmony of interests and the voluntary participation of everybody in carrying out social responsibilities. But the word has many other meanings, some of which lend themselves to misunderstanding, especially when used with people whose unhappy social situation has not given them the opportunity to accustom themselves to the stable distinctions of scientific language, or worse still, when the word is used with political opponents who are in bad faith and want to create confusion and not understanding. Thus, the word is often used to describe a special kind of society, a particular human collectivity gathered together in a particular territory and making up what is called a social unit, irrespective of the way the members of said collectivity are grouped or the state of relations between them. It is also simply used as a synonym for society, and because of these meanings given to the word state, Opponents believe, or rather they pretend to believe, that anarchists means to abolish every social bond, all collective work, and to condemn all men to living in a state of isolation, which is worse than living in conditions of savagery. The word state is also used to mean supreme administration of a country. The central power as opposed to the prov provincial or communal authority. And for this reason, others believe that anarchists want a simple territorial decentralization with the governmental principle left intact, and they thus confuse anarchism with cantonalism or communalism. Finally, state means the condition of being, a way of social life, etc., and therefore, we say, for instance, the economic state of the working class must be changed or that the anarchist state is the only social state based on the principle of solidarity and other similar phrases which, coming from us who, in another context, talk of wanting to abolish the state, can, at first hearing, seem fantastic or contradictory. For these reasons, we believe it would be better to use expressions such as abolition of the state as little as possible, substituting for it in the clearer and more concrete term, abolition of government. Anyway, it is what we shall do in the course of this pamphlet. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.